you're going to make a great resource card. If you have this and the previous one, you have exactly what the semester final will look like. No jokes. The, subjects is, the subject matter isn't going to change. The type of problem isn't going to change. The, literally, the only thing that will change are the actual numbers that I use in the problem. If you know the procedure, it's a multiple choice test. It's going to be even easier than any other test because it is multiple choice. OK, step number one, we are solving an inequality. When you solve inequalities, you graph the answer. If you're really lucky, if you're really lucky, you can get the answer simply by looking at that right there. Why? If you're really lucky. Two things. One, you got to be careful about which way it goes. Remember, if we ever multiply divide by a negative number, it flips around. But you can tell because it's open or closed circle. If you're really lucky, there will only be one answer with a closed circle, and the other three will be an open circle. Why? Because the answer is a closed circle. No. Stop. If you're really lucky, one of the answers will have a closed circle and the other three will be open and you're done. Well, we're not lucky. All four have closed circle. We got to solve it, right? The only rule that you have to remember for inequality is that if you ever multiply divide by a negative number, it flips the inequality around. Do you want to pass or not? Yes. Oh, you're not talking to yourself. So we just solve it. I mean, the steps don't change. The one procedure that changes is if you ever multiply divide by a negative number, you flip the inequality. Get rid of the one. What do you do? Because to get rid of add one, you add one. Yes? Landon? What am I going to write? How do you get rid of that two? Okay, so we get, did, did we just multiply by a negative number? So I don't flip the inequality. I don't care that this number is negative. I care that if I'm multiplying or dividing by a negative number, I flip the inequality. So I get 20. Okay, why is this going to make our life easy? Because it's multiple choice. Look at the number. So which ones can it not be immediately because that number is 20? It can't be B or C. It can't be D. Look at it could be. It's 20. Yeah. It's 20. Now you simply have to be able to read it. Does that say N is bigger or smaller than 20? So where are the numbers that are bigger than 20? You're done. Yes. How do you get rid of this too? Okay, questions. If you're lucky, you probably won't be. If you're lucky... This right here will tell you the answer from the very start. By the way, SAT, ACT are all multiple choice tests. You just took the piece at. It's all multiple choice. All right, next question. I gave you a couple of these. Let's do one where something has to flip. Three. It's three, one where we have to flip. All right, let's do the number three. Okay, here we go. Number three, are we getting lucky? No. Why do I keep saying that? Because I'm looking at this symbol, it's a closed circle. Okay. Well, we got to do the math. So we got 23 less than or equal to negative 4m minus 5. First step plus 5, plus five to both sides. So that gives me 28 negative 4m. How do we get rid of that negative 4? Divide both sides by. I'm dividing by a negative. So what should I do before I even work on the answer? Flip the, sign. flip the sign. If you multiply or divide by a negative, you flip the sign. Well, those cancel and left with M. I get seven. not seven. seven. Look at the answers. Immediately it can't be. Easy. Well, that's kind of a pattern. You understand why I just crossed those two out? Aiden, why did I cross those two out? Because they're not the right answer. Why are they the right answers? Because, uh, four is not the right thing. It's a negative. They're positive. No. Yeah. yeah. 
We did algebra. We got a negative seven. Look at where the dot is. It's on four and four. That's not negative seven. This dot's on negative seven. That dot's on negative seven. Here's where you'll get all the way down here and get it wrong. Because you won't know how to read that. How did I always tell you to read it? Did I say go left to right, right to left, or I said it didn't matter? I said variable to numbered. I said it did matter. I don't read left to right always. I read from variable to number. This says M is smaller than negative seven. So where are the numbers smaller than negative seven? Zero is bigger than negative seven. So the answer is it's A. Here are the numbers that are smaller than negative seven in that direction. Okay. I can't make this one challenging if you know what you're doing because it's not. I can throw a couple negatives in there to flip the inequality to see if you're paying attention at will. Guaranteed. I just want to point out one last thing. Okay. Am I going to flip the inequality when I do this one? Why not? It says negative seven. I'm not dividing by a negative number. I'm dividing by a positive number. The only time you flip the inequality is if you multiply or divide by a negative number. Okay. Once again, the best thing about a multiple choice test is the answer is there. The worst thing is, so is the wrong answer for the mistake you're probably going to make. You're going to be so happy you got the negative seven. You're going to read it the wrong direction and get suckered into picking D when in fact it was A was the answer. All right, questions on solving an inequality. Should be easy money. Should be like guaranteed A. Oh, I'm not going to make a single mistake on that. Hey, if you make a mistake in your algebra, guess what? Are you going to be able to pick the answer if you make a mistake? If you make a mistake, is your answer going to be one of those four? Probably not. All right? I mean, if you literally do bad math, you added one instead of subtracted one, you're not going to get either one of those answers, right? You're going to get something weird. And you're like, oh, wait, my answer's not there. I must have made a mistake. All right. Distributed property, no big deal. Compound inequality. All right. We haven't done compound inequality in a semester. There are two compound inequalities, if you remember. There's an and. And there's an or. Hey, guess which one this one is? Doesn't matter if you forgot everything about ands and ors, it truly doesn't matter. What matters is that you right now write the steps for ands and ors. We'll do the or for it first. For the or, you graph everything. Graph everything. That means anything you see up there, you graph. What do you mean graph? I mean, well, you solve the inequality and you graph it. How many inequalities are up there right now? How many do you see? Answer. There's two. So there's two that you got to graph. What's the first one? P plus 10 is greater than 19. Solve that. So P is greater than. Nine, there's your first one you have to graph. Hey, you could graph that right now. And if there's only one of, one of them up there that says P is greater than nine, you're done. Or you could, well, the other one's already solved. No, it's not solved. It says P over five is less than zero. What do you do? Multiply by five, or you multiply by negative. So I don't flip the equality. So we get P is less than zero. There are the two that you need to graph. Which one do you want to do first? By the way, I would have graphed this one already to see if I got lucky. So P is greater than nine. Open or close circle? Okay. So I need an open circle on nine shade what direction? Okay. Uh, that's not a nine. Uh, that's a nine. Oh, it could be this one. I need that one. Uh, can't be that. It could be this one, though. This says there's your nine. Okay. No, agreed, agreed. I'm just saying, if I would have checked right there, you go to this one while well, there's only, okay, I'm going to shut up now. You guys already figured it out. Or did you? Everybody else? Yeah, it's easy. 
Uh, that's an or. An or, you got to graph everything. You're going to forget this come, when's our test? Wednesday? Thursday. You're going to forget it by Thursday. So put it on your resource card right now and put this example in your resource card just to remind yourself. Because this is way too easy to get wrong. Yeah. Uh, I thought I gave enough. Somebody got two? No, I think you're in the bathroom or something. Well, there is your first mistake. All right. Oops, I just erased. Uh, the other one is and. Anybody remember? If or is you graph everything, and is you graph the overlap. Okay. Here's an and. How do I know it's an and? Well, it doesn't say or. If it doesn't say or, it's an and. And on the and, this, we got to do a problem. You graph the overlap. This was the, what do they both share in common? You're going to wind up with two graphs, and what do they both share in common? That was you graph one, you graph the other one. You squeeze them together, and the overlap is what you, what you graph. Um, just so you know, both of these look like ands. The ors, you got two lines pointing away from each other, at least in algebra one. The ands, you got two dots shading in the middle. I already know it's one of these two. Okay, so let's let's do this. Step number one, you break up your and. Remember doing this? Left side, right side. So your left side is negative 15 is less than or equal to negative 10 plus x. Your right side, if you can see that, it says negative 10 uh, plus x is less than negative 5. Solve both of those individually. Well, they're both just one step. Add 10 to both sides. If I add 10, I get negative 5 is less than or equal to x. Now on this one, add 10 to both sides. I got x is less than 5. I got to graph the overlap. It's what they both share in common. So this is the answer pain. Okay. So let's see. The first one, if I had to do a graph, the graph would be uh, x is greater than negative 5 with a closed circle. So I'd have a closed circle at negative 5, and it would shade up. The second one, that's over there. It says x is less than 5, but it's an open circle. And it's less than, so it's shade right. Now, if I squeeze those two together, where the graphs overlap goes from where to where? Goes from negative 5 to positive 5. Open circle, I'm sorry, closed circle, open circle. Which one? C. You're done. You're like, I could have done that easier just by looking at that number, that number, that number, that number. Just be careful. By the way, that's true. You could do it that way. Who's lost on that? There'll be one question on an end. Did I get how many of these did I give you? Gave you two of each, two ors and two ands for practice. Oh, just one of each? Okay. One problem. It'll either be an and or it'll be an or. Are we okay? Does it have the word or? So it's an and. Occasionally, we did it in class. We had ones that literally had the word and. Boy, you only see that in Algebra 1 book. You go up higher, you never see the word and. You will always see the word or. You'll never see the word and. They just do that for beginners. Okay. We're in the realm of I've forgotten everything. I know I did this, but I don't know how to do it now. So make sure you take notes. Solving absolute value inequality or absolute value equations. We'll do inequalities later. Here's the step. Step one, get the these symbols by themselves. I don't care what's on the inside. I care what's on the outside. Get the absolute value symbols either on the left side or the right side of the equation. It's just regular algebra. Step one, get the absolute value symbols by themselves. So get absolute value, oops, value by itself. In other words, do algebra. 
So I've got n plus 8, the absolute value of that, plus 5 equals 16. There's only one thing I need to get rid of. What do I got to get rid of? Say again. I'm trying to get these by themselves. Don't care what's on the inside. The 5. How do we get rid of the 5? Both sides. So we get absolute value of n plus 8 is equal to a subtractive 5, 11. Step two, two equations. The two equations come from here. The first one is you get rid of the absolute value, write what's there. Erase the absolute value symbols. So I get n plus eight equals 11. The second one. N plus eight equals negative. Okay, you do remember, very nice. N plus eight equals negative 11, and I solved both of those. By the way, if you're lucky, you can solve one and you're done. Which one do you want to solve? No, which one do you want to solve? So subtract eight from both sides, you get negative 19. It's only one up here that says negative 19, you're done, D. If you had to do the second one, subtract eight from both sides, you get a three. There's only one with a three. Boy, that's a big Christmas present right there. I can't guarantee you it will happen that way all the time. Do I need to do another one or you got that? We better do another one. All right. Pick one. Number, which one looks hard? There's only one other one. There's only one other one? Oh, I guess we're doing that one. Okay. Procedure doesn't change. Get the absolute value symbols by themselves. B over 10 minus 4 equals negative 3. Get rid of the negative 4. Okay. Two equations. First one is just get rid of the absolute value symbol. Hey, multiply both sides by 10. What do you get? Uh, it's either this one or this one. So we got to do the other side. The other side is B over 10 equals negative one. Therefore we get, therefore the answer is, the answer is D. You see what I did there? You know what you're doing. Algebra is easy. I mean, it's, there's not, there's not much thinking going on here. They're just calculating, right? The problem is we do so much in algebra one, you forget this. I mean, I got people right now that just remembered how to do this, but they forgot it until I gave them a reminder. That's the issue with algebra one. It's a lot of stuff. Wait till you see Jim. That's so reassuring. Uh, I think, Sarah, you're going to love geometry. Why? Because the, usually the smart kid that is very lazy does very well in geometry. Because what happens is, there's, there's not much memorization that you need to do. It's an open note test. It's a calculator test every every day, so or, or every test. So like just, it's open note for everything and it's a calculator. Oh no, I'm passing. Right. You just complimented me and also like- the, But what I tell people on day one is it doesn't matter that it's open notes and it doesn't matter that you can use a calculator. You can talk to the girls are in it right now, right? I don't wanna say there's been some tears, but let's just say there's been some unhappy results right there's been kids that literally have probably gotten their first f in their life in a math class in geometry right all right uh it's a little bit hard to see but this is how it will look uh it looks better on your paper uh this is the one where we graph the line shape once again stupid simple uh we graph equations but we didn't do it inequality all right nathan do you remember solid or dash Number nine, David, do you remember solid or dash? Solid or dash? What? How many of these have a dash line? Solid or dash? You, they just convinced you you were wrong. It's dash. How many of these have a dash line? So it's C. And you're done. Will it be that easy? No, right? But this one is, 
I'm not saying that you can you can uh, uh, count on that on the test, Kayla. You understand what why we said the answer is C? Yeah. If this had been a solid line underneath, then it would be uh, this one, this one, or this one. But if it doesn't, I mean, I don't have to do anything. So how would you do this if we didn't already narrow it down to it? Well, I would look at dashed or solid first, and then I would look at the y-intercept. Piper, what's the y-intercept from yesterday? What's the y-intercept? Is it the M or the B? What's the B? Hey, does this line go through negative three? Does this line go through negative three? Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. I'm sorry. This one doesn't. Does this line go through negative three? Well, there's only one that goes through negative three. There's a second way, and we can figure it out of a C just by looking at it. If worse comes to worse, and we have at least two of them that go through negative three, and they're both either solid or dashed, whatever is the appropriate thing, then we have to look at the slope. Then we apply the slope. Okay. So the slope here is down three over one. Notice each one of these goes down three over one. Uh, remember, on this particular one, the computer did this, not me. They made the squares go by two, not by one. So when you go up one square, you're actually going up by two. I wish they wouldn't do that. That, that causes problems, but they do. Okay. We were really lucky on that one. We better look at another one. But maybe on the test, it'll be that easy. All right, we're back to Nathan. Next one, solid or dashed? I want to see if you know this. There's a 50-50 chance the first time. Now there's only 25% chance. Solid. Okay, it is solid. So which ones can we ignore? Okay, what's the y-intercept? Y equals MX plus B. Where's the y-intercept? The M or the B? The M or the B is the y-intercept. What? What's, what's our B? What is it? What is it? Okay. Does this one go through four? Does this one go through four? You're done. You see how I did that, everybody? Now... If worse comes to worse, Kaylee, you're doing that face again. This one goes through five. This one goes through four. Um, worse comes to worse, we would have to apply the slope. Hey, is this slope positive or negative? What's that slope? What's that slope? There's a second way of figuring out the easy way. All right. I only gave you, I think, two of those, right? Yeah. No, I gave you two. The other one is system of, of inequalities. Uh, I only gave you two of those. If you need more practice tomorrow, ask for it. All right. The ugliest of the ugly are the next two. You have a call, believe it or not. Mr. Shardy. Yep, at 1230 is when they were supposed to show up. Okay. Uh, I will, my class is over at 12.15, and as soon as 12.15 is down, then I'll be down there to give them the test. Okay, bye. Oh, people read emails. All right, so this is worst of the worst. This one is ugly. It is easy to make a mistake. I will try to attempt to show you how I would handle this one, because I would not actually do the problem. Here's what I would do. I would pick one of those equations. D. D. Equations or inequality, sorry. Five. First one or the second one? Second one. I pick the second one, it's got a solid line. It has to go through negative one. Nothing here goes through negative one. Ain't that one? It's okay. I mean, uh, nothing here goes through negative one. It's not that one. Goes, oh, this goes by. Now they're giving me, it goes by. Sorry. Now they're giving me one to go by one. So be careful on the test. Make sure the square is going to go by two or by one. It can't be C or D. Could be this one, but check it out. This one does go through negative one. It says it's solid. Uh, is that solid? Yeah. But it says the other one is. Yeah. So it can't be that one. It can't be B either. This one goes through negative one. But this one is solid. So I'm done. 
Do you see how I did that? Yes. Now, if you wanted, if you're required to do more, you got to do more. The next thing I would do is not, not calculate the slope, but see if the slope is positive or negative and just make sure that that blue line is either, you know, the appropriate uh, value. Hey, on the solid one, the slope is positive. Okay, that's positive. On the dashed one, the slope is negative. Okay, that one's negative. You can usually get to the answer for these if it's a multiple choice uh, question. Just by doing that, I really haven't done any math. I just used the fact that the teacher was dumb enough to give their students a multiple choice. What am I saying? Uh, the teacher chose to uh, give a multiple choice test. All right. I only gave you one of those, correct? One of those, correct? All right, so let's look at 12. Oh no, let's look at 11, sorry. 11 is a different one. Okay, let's see if that same thing will work. Chris, pick one. Like the uh, equation Yeah, thing. it won't, right, pick one. Bottom. Okay, the bottom one, it says solid line, and the y-intercept is uh, a three. Does anything go through positive three? Yeah, right there, but it's dashed, not that one. That goes through that goes through three. It's solid, but so is the other one. Hey, I, I got you're done. You didn't do any work. You know what I mean? We didn't really like do any work there, and yet we got to the right answer. Aiden, did you follow that logic? Yes. What was the logic? Uh, the solid line. That was it. How do we know it was solid or dash? By looking at the um, negative and positive. No. No, actually. Oh no. By looking yeah. at this symbol right here. That's a negative. Um, There's no negative there. All right, never mind, never mind. It's just greater than or less than. That's what I meant. If it has a line underneath of it, is it solid or dash? Solid. And if it doesn't, it's a dash line. Why can I get rid of these three immediately? Because they're both. Dash I got dash lines and neither one of these should have a dash line. Uh, I'm not going to say guaranteed that's going to work. It, it worked at least like the second one we eliminated two. This is the one we eliminated three just by looking at that one thing alone. That's a pretty nifty trick. Okay? Use it to your advantage. Let's see if I can walk this time without knocking things over. All right. 15 minutes. All right, we've arrived at the thing that uh, I know that my geometry girls are going to like kill this, but the rest of you probably are not. All right, we got to review this. Okay. Somewhere on your paper, you need to have the perfect squares written down. The, the first 16 perfect squares, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, uh, 64, uh, 81, 100, 121, 144. We can probably stop there. I'm not going to give you anything bigger than that. That's not the first 16. Those are the first 12. Why am I writing those numbers? Because when you take the square root of those, you get 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. When you take the square root of these perfect squares, you get a nice whole number. Why is that important? Because that's how you do these. Off the side of your resource card, just have those written. So you can think about them. To solve this problem, do it nice and large. The square root of 12. Well, I don't know what the square root of 12 is. Right? It's not one of those numbers over there. So we have to rewrite 12 as one of those numbers times any other number. Four times three. I can rewrite 12 as four times three. Further, I can write that as the square root of four times the square root of three. I know what the square root of four is. The square root of four is two. So this turns into two times the square root of three, which is answer not A, but B. The hardest thing is when I give you this number, you all by your lonesome, have to be able to think of two numbers multiplied together that are 12, where one of those numbers is over there. For me, 
I start with four. Four is either going to work or it's not going to work. If four doesn't work, I think about nine, 16. I'll just promise you, I'm not going to give you a crazy number. If four and nine don't work, well, then I'm being mean to you. It's probably going to be four or nine. Sounds good. If you can do the next one right, yes. All right. So I'm leaving those up there. We're going to do the next one. I should have Chris do this so I don't walk back and forth. Okay. I'm pretty sure Rylan knows what's going on, Kaylee. I got to rewrite 27 as two numbers multiplied together where one of them is one of those numbers. So what would that be? I gotta write 27 as two numbers multiplied together where one of them is one of those numbers. There you go. So I can write that as nine times three, take the square root. And I could, nobody actually does this part, but I could write that as the square root of nine times the square root of three. Yeah? Most people get to this step and they stop and write the answer. What's the square root of nine? So this part right here turns into three and well, you're left with the other part, three root three. Therefore the answer is B again. Yeah. Oh, this was supposed to be Tristan's. All right, Tristan, you get the hardest one, bathroom question. This looks impossible. It's not, it's easy. Hey, the rule for addition is you're only allowed to add when you have square roots, when what's underneath the square root is exactly the same. Do you remember this? The square root of A plus the square root of A, and I put a B here and a B here. As long as what's underneath here is exactly the same, that's a, that's a A, not a nine, okay? As long as what's there is the same, you add B plus B, and the answer would be, B root A, whatever, I can't think of this, B root A. All right, we're gonna take this piece by piece. So it says big numbers, two root eight minus root 12 plus two root eight. You are allowed to add things that have the same square root. What's that number? Eight. Is there any other eights? Yes. If you have the same thing, you take the number out front and you group it with the number out front. That says two plus two is four root eight. That's done, that's done, what's left? It's not 12. It's not 15. Square root of 12. It's not 12, it's a square, we'd say root 12. Okay, it feels like we're done. Is that one of the answers? Well, there must be a hidden perfect square. Is there a perfect square in eight? Is there one of those numbers inside of eight? Yes. Which number? I can write that as four, that four doesn't change. I can write eight as four times two. Hey, what's the square root of four? Two. Two times four is, so I'm left with an eight root two. Is there one of those numbers inside of here? Square root of four is? Two, okay. two times four is eight. What number? So I could write that as minus four times three. What's the square root of four? So I could write that as minus, square root of four is? What's left? What? Root three. Does that look like one of the answers? That is answer. They're trying to trick you up here, they're kind of close. Is it A or B? It is A. All right, this is a hard skill. You're introduced to this idea in algebra and geometry. You use it, you use it a lot. I mean, a lot. Like, once you get past, I don't know what chapter it is, five or six, once you get to chapter five or six, you use it all, the, every single homework. There'll be square roots in there somewhere, and you gotta, you gotta reduce them. Algebra one is when you first learn this skill. All right, I will put one, like, not like this. It'll be more like the previous one, a little bit easier. Okay. All right. Go. All right. Next one. Multiplication. Well, we we kind of already done this, right? 
For multiplying, you literally just multiply. Uh, you multiply, the rule is outsides with outsides, inside with inside. So if this was what you were multiplying, we do A times A, B times B. Whatever's inside stays inside, whatever's outside stays outside. So Nathan, what do we do? Hey, let him talk. You multiply outsides with outsides, insides with insides. Look at your problem. What are the outside numbers? 17. I skipped 16. 16 was like 15. What are the outside numbers? Therefore, it is. Hey, what's the number in front of X? So what's the outside number? It can always be a one. One times anything is itself. You don't change anything. So what are the outside numbers for both of those? What's one times one? Okay, so we put a one or we leave a one off. What are the inside numbers? We'll multiply. Is that one of the answers? Which one? Not, that doesn't look like that. Guess why they put 80 there to sucker you in. If all you remember is insides with insides, you think the answer is 80. Is this one of the answers? Therefore, there must be one of these hidden inside. Which one of these goes into 80? And, we're, and we would like to find the biggest one. That's a 64. Which one of these goes into 80? 16 times what is 80? Anna is throwing you a life preserver. You would have probably guessed that 16. You probably guessed 4. And you had said 4 times 20. That'll work. Square root of 4? Work will be Nathan. Is that one of the answers? Yes or no? Is this one of those answers? Oh, so there must be another one of these hidden inside of 20. What number of here goes into 20? Does 25 go into 20? Does 16 go into 20? Does 9 go into 20? Does 4 go into 20? Yes. 4 times what? Okay. What's the square root of 4? So this gives me a two, I gotta multiply it by two. That gives me eight. It's not, I'm not multiplying by four, I'm multiplying by the square root of four. The square root of four is two. Yeah, like I said. Look, I can't hear a word. You're, you're I real said soft. That first. That's the first thing I put I know, saying. but I was making you say it again. And two times two. Four. So I get four, what's left over? Is that one of the answers? Yes. Okay. What's the square root of 16? Four. What are you left with? Five. So Anna saw that 16, probably most of us would have used four, right? 16 is the ugly one. You got you, you you end up learning why she's doing it because she does it in geometry, right? You get used to those seeing those numbers. All right. Tell me the steps. Don't do the math. Tell me the steps. Step one. What was the first thing I asked you? Yeah, outside times outside, step two. Inside times inside, step three. This was, this was okay, this is outside, outside, inside, inside. Now what do we do? We looked at these numbers, and we asked ourselves, will any of these numbers go into here? We, it's basically simplifying the, the radical. Radical is the square root, okay? All right. Can you remember that, Nathan? Because you can get this, right? Especially when it's quiet and the teacher isn't, give me the answer, give me the answer, give me the answer, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. You can do this. All right, anybody else? Questions? All right, here's one with a bigger one. Chris, this is yours. What did you say step one was? 
How you doing? You, you, you doing good? Ser great. Seriously, it's all going to fall apart next year. I mean, it's going to really fall apart if you can't pay attention. Nathan, tell them what first step was. Outside numbers. Outside numbers. Multiply them. Uh, ten. Step two. What is it? Inside numbers. I guess. Now you got it. Eight. Ooh. If you had been paying attention to the previous one, you should get this one. Step three, Nathan, was? Which number? I'm looking at those numbers, and I'm seeing if do any of them go into 80. I guess four does. Four does. So we could write 80 as four times. That would be 320. Four times 20 is 80. What's the square root of four? Everybody look up here. This is a mistake every one of you make. You're like, I know what to do. I know what to do. And you say four times 10 is 40 and you get it wrong. Because it's, it's not four times 10. It's the square root of four, which is two. times 10, which is. So I get 20 root 20. Oh, I wish Anna had done this problem. Uh, are there any of those numbers inside of 20? Uh, yeah. I can write 20 as four times five. It's not four times 20, it's the square root of four, which is times 20. You can do it, it's two times 20. Now look at the answers, is that one of the answers? Yes. D, it's D. Yes, yes, it is. So you got this, and what I left off was take check, maybe it's one of the answers. If it's not, assume that you did it right, but assume that it, there's a perfect square hidden inside. All right. We got this. Yes or no? All right. Geometry is going to be really bad. Chemistry is going to be really bad next year. Uh-oh. All right. Now we finally arrived at the test you literally took. When did we take the test? Friday? Thursday? Thursday. Thursday. Hey, we're at the material you just took our test on. Look over the sheet. Is there something you want me to show you? I'm not going to go over this because we literally had two days of practice and a test five days ago. So I got solved by factory, solved by complete the square. I think, or no, did I leave that one off? Solved by factory, solved by complete the square, solved by quadratic formula. That's it. Which one do you want to see? I don't want to see <laughs> One more time. Yeah, I can give it to you back right now. No. All right. Do you want uh, rude comments or no rude comments? No rude comments. No rude comments. Who votes for rude comments? Landon, who wants sarcastic comments? I'll take them. Sure, I'll take sarcastic comments. Untrue oh, comments. I want untrue. 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 Looks like sarcastic comments won out. Yeah. Lady, you did really well. Island, <laughs> you did better than someone who did really well. Oh, cool. But not by much. Oh. Hey, no, it's sarcastic. Yeah. I'm being sarcastic. Oh. The other guy didn't do well. Uh, Kaden, actually, I can't be sarcastic because he did well. Yeah. So didn't say that. No, that's not sarcastic. Uh, Brandy did very well. No, that's the truth. Nathan, you did about what you normally do. Sierra, you did better than you normally do. Oh, Ryan. Hannah, not only got. Yeah. Anna, not only did she get a perfect paper, she oh got more God. than a perfect yeah. paper. How is that possible? Yeah. How did Hannah get better than perfect? Oh, I did both No, oh, she gave me 20 bucks. I got a 30. I take bribes. No, no, it's the two square. No, she got the she got the perfect square one, both of them right, but uh, uh, completing the square ones right. But she also got something else wrong. There were there were two problems or two extra points, and she got two of those points, but she missed them on some of Ari, I can't use sarcasm. You did well. You did well. You and your brother did well. 
Sophia. Sniper, I mean, this is your best test of the year. Best test of the year. Aiden. Just Aiden. Just Aiden. What you got? All right. Uh, Riley, you did well. Boy, you would have gotten the perfect paper. You forgot. Oh, one thing. What's the, if X squared equals nine, what's the answer? If X squared equals nine, what's the answer? What? If you had remembered that, you would have gotten the perfect paper. And we, we, I already told you. I mean, you did really. You, you have you have one little tiny adding subtracting mistake. You have one little I forgot the plus or minus, and the rest was you forgot the fact that it's all the need the answers. Tristan. And one person didn't put the name on it. Who doesn't have a paper? Who doesn't have a paper? Who doesn't have a paper? No. It's not Julie. Somebody doesn't have a paper in front of their face right now. Aiden, what'd you get on the test? He's looking at his paper. Lily, I have hers up here. I haven't graded it. Ryland. Who doesn't have a paper in front of their face? Dude, somebody. Who doesn't have a paper in front of their face? I, I got great. I don't want to see it. And I will give an extra point of credit. Give it here. 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 Whoever can tell me what it's it's somewhere. No, give it here. Give it. No, give it to me. It's me. Oh, it's a. It's a. It's a what is that? So that's, that's a fifty. That's a fifty. So you got five. That's a five. I should have so where possible God's green earth would you gotten a 50? I don't know. I was, I, I was so desperate. Did I get extra points? All right. We'll stop it right there. Our power score said I got a 38. Out of? 78. 64. It said 38 out of 78 on power score. Let's check. You should have gotten half. <laughs> 